Mary Meet, Annie here. This video is a lot of fun. It's about cosmology. It's actually a response to Red Dragon's comments to me on my thousand viewer contest where I was presented with an interesting question. The question went, I was wondering if you could make a video about your view on cosmology. I've heard the Corellian idea that God is, is the spirit world and God is matter. I've heard of Asatru believing in the nine worlds, etc. What is cosmology to you? How do you view the world, God and Goddess? In a way, in the end, when it comes down to my worldview, my cosmology, it does connect to what you said about a goddess that is eternal and doesn't change, and a god that does change, who is born, who dies, and is transformed and reborn. But when I think of cosmology, the word cosmology, it goes out to me beyond the concept of god and goddess. Now my relation to it is stolen in great part from the ancient Greeks. There is no doubt about it. My relationship to cosmology, my personal, my personal cosmology, is really inspired by studies of prime matter and the prime mover. There is no doubt about that, and I will not deny that is the source of my personal cosmology. Now, it's what was taught to me in my early Wiccan training. About it. To me, it has morphed and changed over the growing and maturing of my life. Therefore, like everything else, it never stays the same. Change is constant, including my relationship to it. I don't find it to be the thing which is, and I never revisit and never challenge. That concept that inspired me is the concept that there was something that existed at the beginning of time. Nothing came before it. It was created out of nothing. It simply existed. But everything that then came to be came from it. So the concept was nothing existed before it. It simply existed. And then everything we know of as existence came from it. And it exists in pieces. Its essence, its energy, exists in everything which exists, because indeed, everything came from it. It, however, remains whole and separate. Part of the paradox of my particular personal cosmology is, while its essence is shared by everything which is, exists, it was never lessened or made smaller as things moved from it. It remains whole and pure in its original form. Just my own relationship to it. What comes from that source is things. Everything. Matter. Both physical and energetic existence. So there was the thing which existed. Nothing existed before it. And from it came matter and energy. That is my personal cosmology. It ties back into what you were saying because the things which came from it which are matter, the tangible physical things, I do see that aligned to the power of the God. The energy that came from it, that which we cannot see, the thing which transforms matter, the thing which changes matter into other forms of matter, that energy, which cannot be seen, which is intangible, I do see aligned to the power of the goddess. So that does tie back into what you were talking about, about what God and goddess might mean at the level of cosmology. So matter is the things which can be changed. Now in my personal practice, taken very basically, that's the four elements. Energy is what transforms them, what remixes them into new combinations, what breaks them down, what builds them back up, what changes them and constantly transforms them. 
Matter changed is still matter to me. But the agent of change, that which transforms it to me, is a separate energy of its own, impacts the change, but is not the change. It's not the result. It's what causes things to happen. So I see very powerfully, the God is the symbol of what is created and recreated over and over again in infinite combinations. And I see Goddess as ever-present, inspiring and causing change. Matter and energy, truly, is how I see that. Within my cosmology, I see both of those existences as equally powerful, matter and energy, and balanced. I see them equal and balanced. So I'm definitely inspired by these ancient philosophies about prime matter and the prime mover. There's no doubt about that. But at some point in the study of them, they became something that felt very real to me, which gave me the explanation I needed for existence. The beingness of things and how things are changed and what things come from. And even though I don't quite get the concept yet, what things return to. So what I found is these ancient philosophies gave me a vision that I could wrap my brain around. This brain that cannot understand these vast intellectual debates and scientific discourse. It could see the world as I know it. Described in this way. I just had a sense of these two realities that which is tangible and then the force which changes it into something else and then along came my studies and it just felt right to me to use that as a personal cosmology as a way to tie together what I sensed how I felt strongly about so this ancient cosmology at my simple way of understanding it fit for me I'd say what it boiled down to is when I was looking for what were God and Goddess, why did we even need the concept of God and Goddess, what did it permit us to understand that we couldn't understand without it, they had started to equal those two realities to me of matter and energy. And then it all seemed to come into one cohesive story to me when I experimented with this particular cosmology as what mattered to me. When I was studying early on, there was no given, there was no not, there was no this is what it is. We studied so many different ancient concepts and we all came into our own idea, that personal cosmology. Now we were expected by the end of our training period before we took our initiation to have a relationship to some kind of personal cosmology that we could voice and say, this is what it is for me. Not that we were expected that, well, that is what it is and it would never change. But we were using our brains to create a spiritual world that reflected how we conceived of our physical one. We needed to learn to tie the physical and the energetic and the spiritual together in a package to be able to work with our chosen gods, to be able to work our magics, to be able to be present spiritually in meditation, be fully present in ritual with brothers and sisters. So we were all encouraged to develop a personal cosmology, literally in some ways making it up as we went along. I know where my inspiration came from, but I made up what came next. And you asked about cosmology and I wanted to share that's how I arrived at it. I know I made it up. It suited me, and it suited me for a long time now. Over the years, I have come to think of that place that existed at the beginning. Nothing existed before it, but there it existed. I have begun to touch on that, especially as I've gotten older. I call it mystery. Touching on it. There is beauty and wonder even in acknowledging that it exists. 
that is in its vastness beyond my ability to comprehend, but I can strive to comprehend bits and pieces of it, and throughout my life, bits and pieces have indeed made themselves more clear to me. You have to have a certain mindset, and I think we pagans tend to share this, that we love the fact that we can happily say we can never get it, we can never understand it, we can only touch it on aspects of it, and the beauty of it is appreciating that others touch on different aspects than we do. We can learn from each other and how we can inspire each other is the power of these invented cosmologies. It's a way of drawing a picture for others of what it is for us. And then it's a way to share and discuss and learn and grow. And this concept of the vastness that is mystery is definitely an important part of the cosmology for me and a comforting part of it. I like that I never have to have the burden of coming to a point of thinking I understand. <laughs> I understand more and more as I get older, but an important part of my cosmology is that sense of mystery, that which I will not experience or understand, but in moments I indeed can embrace parts of it. I think of that, what may have been called in those ancient days as prime matter. And we think of the stories of prime matter and the prime mover and what that was in those old philosophies. I think of that as the place of possibility. The place of possibility. When I started looking at it as the place of possibility, I was able to have a concept of how something could exist when nothing had come before it. It was the place of possibility. Mystery and possibility, to me, one and the same, an important part of my own personal Annie's cosmology. I feel, I'll wrap this up now, I feel, I hear, I feel, I sense a hum in all of existence that to me is an echo of that possibility. It is a sense of life ever changing, of existence ever changing, but in that positive sense that it is about destruction and creation in the best, most powerful sense. And I feel like I am part of that. On my best days, I feel that home in me. I feel that echo, that perfect feeling of when I feel that, I feel like I am totally in tune with all that exists that I can possibly comprehend, and then that glorious, glorious vastness that is possibility, that is mystery. That's where my concept of existence begins and ends, is in that place of possibility. I have a note here for myself when I'm ending this to say, that place is a place of possibility. Return an eternal possibility over and over again. Sometimes on my own, I touch on that. And sometimes it is through my experience of being with or other than myself. That winding of myself outside of myself that then I feel that hum. So I hope that answers your question about cosmology. It is fascinating and fun to invent this as we go along in life and feel what it is for us and see how we can put some imagery around what we experience. What we experience is our reality. We know that and we are more open to learning more about it the longer we live. But when we can move outside of that to the place of possibility, what might be the start of it all? What is matter and change and eternal change, no less? And what might that matter and that energy return to? That's what I've built my personal cosmology around. It's a story. It's a tale created by Annie. And I love hearing the tales that others create 
around their personal view of where they see themselves in relationship to all of existence. I wish you mirth and reverence. Merry part.